live from the Workplace Ninja Summit in Luzerne. Highlights, insights, and simply interesting talks. This is the Workplace Ninja Podcast. And we're back on the Workplace Ninja Summit 2024 with day two, but the last recording for this day uh, in the series that we're doing, but uh, we will continue this evening because I think there is something running this evening with an Oktoberfest kind of thing. So there is a little bit of drink and I, I know some Dutch people over here want to record some stuff so we will do later on but this is the new, late, uh, the last normal recording um, my name is Frans Houdendorp and Harjit oh l- let's wait I forgot that's the I think <laughs> this is the <laughs> you did that earlier too <laughs> it's the third time that I forgot all the sliders but um, I've opened it so Harjit welcome I'm Haja Dalawal and still my <laughs> co-host so let's see still if we can if, if we can ask some interesting questions to uh, the, the the people that we have on the table. Lafanya, uh, please welcome. Thank you so much. Super excited. This is my first time here in Switzerland and at Workplace Ninja. Is it your, your first time? It is my first time. I thought we were we, we have met last year, but that should be done in March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably in a different <laughs> summit. But what's more exciting is being able to celebrate the fifth. Uh, anniversary of Workplace Ninja. Yeah, I think yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. Welcome. Um, and Gabriel, you're also from Microsoft? Yes, same uh, same as Lavania. We are both at Microsoft. I'm a product manager for Security Copilot. Uh, first mm-hmm. time in Switzerland and first time at Workplace Ninja. So thank you very much for ah, having me. We got two ah. newbies. <laughs> <laughs> you're on Copilot for Security. Lavania, what, what, what was your role? So I am leading the co-pilot effort for Intune, and I work very closely with Gabriel uh, in the co-pilot for security space. Yeah, co-pilot for security is more or less the umbrella uh, of all the co-pilot stuff that is there, isn't it, uh, Gabriel? Yes, that's that's a fair assessment. It's like the platform, quote unquote, that we use in order to build the different experiences, <coughs> both embedded within the product. Similar, like Lavinia is working on the uh, Intune side of the coin. Similar experiences are in Purview, in Entra, in the Defender product stack. So, Copilot for Security encom- encompasses all of those, and within each product, we have the different flavors, if you will. Right. So, yeah. Copilot for Security glues everything together, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs> But I, everyone is talking about AI, Gen AI, whatever it it, it, it calls. Um, what does Copilot for security in general? What what does it does? So, what does generally it do? speaking, it is still at the, the base of it. It's still a large language model. It yeah. doesn't differ from that. It's not changing from that. However, what we try to do with Copilot for security is scope it to the data number one from your products, from the products that you are currently using. And number two, provide the answers that you might need in your context, in your specific context. So if you're investigating, I'll use a Defender incident right now. If you're investigating an incident, you don't care, for example, you might not care at that particular point in time that there's another item app happening elsewhere. But you do want the context of that incident, of that problem right there to give you the answers that are relevant to help mm-hmm. you resolve it and to make you more efficient. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you said it so well. <laughs> I should say, maybe you have a follow-up question, but... <laughs> I'll come up with something. <laughs> but I can add something more sure. to what Gabriel said. Let's do that. <laughs> so, uh, as you're thinking about incident investigation, having more <coughs> context or more data uh, to think through <coughs> and evaluate the incident is always <coughs> helpful. So, one of the recent things that we have done is enabling the Intune endpoint information into the defense experience where as you're investigating an incident you do have devices that is impacted due to that investigation um, and the uh, incident at hand what makes this so great is if you have a SOC analyst or a SEC admin or even a DSR looking at that incident they have that information right there and then it's so much easier for them to work with the IT department to see if there is any policy that needs to be uh, deployed Mm -hmm. to be able to mitigate this issue yeah, and um, 
Copilot, it's helps for it within security. And I'm a security guy, um, so it helps a SOC analyst. At, mm -hmm. If you are using the, the right prompts, and then you can get a lot of information because it can combine um, information and data from different systems as well. Um, can it also help uh, people driving adoption? Uh, maybe not a, a SOC analyst, but if I have a SOC analyst and... Uh, who has doing some prompts about a security incident, mm -hmm. then it gets some information and it can move forward. But what about I'm a newbie in, 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 um, in, in, in working with incidents? Can it that way, can it also help, for example? Yes. So you're a newbie. I'll take that example from yep. the start, right? First year on the job, let's say. That's a common scenario that we see. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, <coughs> Copilot for Security can help in... There are multiple ways, but I'll give two concrete examples. Uh, script analyzer within the Defender Embedded as well as within the standalone. It can analyze a script, deobfuscate it if it's obfuscated, and tell you what the script does. I'm not saying maybe oh, you're oh. familiar with PowerShell, for example, yeah. the language. However, <coughs> are you familiar with the Base64 encryption? As a junior, not likely. It can happen. I'm not going to dismiss that. Right. But it's the more languages that you can get scripts in, it, it automatically you won't be able to know them all. So you would spend quite a lot of time trying to understand what that mm -hmm. script does if you go line by line and try if you're not familiar with the language that yep. it's used. So a script analyzer can help and upscale a junior analyst from that point of view alone. The second example that I will give is more focused on the standalone procedure. If you're a junior analyst, maybe you don't know how every single incident yeah. needs to be handled. So we have a function called knowledge base integration. No, it has two capabilities to it. One is related to Azure AI search. It's a bit more complex. I won't go today into it, but we can discuss it separately. The second one is f uploading a file. In that file, you can have a doc file, a docx file, whatever you want, and just have outlined phishing incident investigation steps to take. A junior analyst can just ask what are the steps to take with, oh, within wow. a phishing incident, we are referencing the file name, and it will automatically just put the, the step one, step two, step three, step four. Here's what to do and stuff like that. Exactly. Right. Now, generally speaking, that would also help a uh, junior analyst <clears throat> be upscaled. The third one that I thought about, but I'm going to gross over uh, rapidly, is knowledge, uh, na natural language 2KQL. You okay. can use that to, from a natural language prompt, however, as you've said a bit earlier, prompt engineering is very important here. Yeah, yes. We need to ask <laughs> for items that are specific in order to scope the prompt and the answer to what we want it to give. It can create an entire KQL query for you. So KQL, not the most difficult language, but it can <clears throat> help you in creating that. And it also can help, for example, a manager that has nothing to do with KQL mm -hmm. get the responses that he's looking for. And I'll add one more uh, flavor to this, which is the prompt books. I was exactly. hoping you would cover that. <laughs> Some form of time I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But I think uh, prompt books is a great way, um, especially when you think about the various experiences within um, individual product embedded workflow. Um, having like a playbook created for exchange of knowledge and uh, exchange of right key level of information being available in a single <clears throat> place is so helpful because if let's say he's done all the legwork and he's got the playbook ready for me to use, that's ideal because I'm not spending the same amount of time that he spent uh, doing all the investigation and getting it to work the right. way we need. Uh, so I'm just going to leverage that and I'm going to say, I got this incident, this is what it is the impact, and this is how you go ahead and mitigate and remediate, right? Like, that's exactly what you want as an outcome from the co-pilot uh, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I've talked to um, some customers um, in the space, and, uh, you know, some of them have told me, especially this one, they have like about 100 um, IT admins who focus on security. So 100 people working on security, but they love security for, I don't know, uh, Copilot for security, uh, they're saying they they get like million lines of logs like on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Even with 100 people, it's impossible for them to analyze mm -hmm. what's going on, what are the trends, is there an issue, is there not an issue, and stuff like that. So, yeah. 
I love um, to hear that feedback. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like that's the power, right? Being able to mm-hmm. skim through a large set of data yeah. um, and then picking on the right information, which is the useful insights, is so helpful because yeah. uh, just doing a parallel mapping to audit logs that we have with an Intune as well, right? right? That's another area where I almost think about it as a gold mine. But then if you don't know how to skim what to look for, it's going to be a harder problem to solve. Yeah. What do you see uh, the future of uh, Copilot and Intune? What are like, you know, you know Intune really well. You're in the security space. Like what? Like, are you asking more in context of scenarios? and? Yeah, scenarios. I think like, you know, to give people an idea of what you can do with Uh it, you know? Um, Yeah. I'm going to latch on to what Gabriel said uh, in one of the earlier experiences. Natural language to KQL. Mm-hmm. That is so powerful when you really think about it because you, one, you give the customers an option to be able to leverage a free form way of asking a question using natural language. Yep. That means you don't need to come with any kind of preparation and behind the scenes all the hard work is happening and the KQL gets generated. One, I don't need to learn KQL or let's say I know KQL but I probably am not proficient, right? right. That means I don't mind that initial help. Once the query mm. is generated, I know how to tweak it. But that initial query writing is probably not my forte, right? So <laughs> which is where uh, this natural language to KQL is so helpful and it also works beautifully because when you think about this cross-product scenarios, your base is the same. You're talking about Custo query language. It's all Custo. And how do you do those joins and bring the data together is where uh, the whole NL to KQL really shines. Um, So that's one of the scenarios that I think is very powerful. Um, To add on more uh, in context of IT admin and some of the scenarios that we manage, Policy management is another important space yeah. and troubleshooting. No matter what you do, which product you yeah. go, you have the support, you have the help desk tickets, and then you're trying to do the troubleshooting. The more you can do there with the kind of playbooks we were talking earlier on right. yeah. and reduce the time to resolve issues or reduce the time to mitigate, I think that is exactly what our customers need because you are having so much of loss of productivity mm-hmm. because of trying to do the investigation in different places and sometimes not knowing where to look for the key information is a hassle, right? So right, that's right. where I think this is really going to continue to shine and that's the same feedback we're getting from our customers as well. They are like policy management, troubleshooting, <laughs> NL to KQL. They love it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you mentioned PowerShell earlier and, you know, in a simplest form, just co-pilot in general, I was talking to a couple of IT admins and one guy was talking to me about his, his colleague was standing right there and he said, you know, we were talking about PowerShell. Like, you know, we used to hear about PowerShell, PowerShell, PowerShell mm-hmm. all the time in the past. Like everything was PowerShell related. It's still there. It's still being used. But now everyone's talking about co-pilot, right? Like it's trying to help to do the, your work and stuff for you. So he said, you know, this this guy used to ask me to write PowerShell scripts or tell me to, you know, hey, can you create a script for me for this and this and this. He says, now with Copilot, he doesn't even come to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's, creating, it's good and bad. he's creating it himself and he's learning it, right? I mean, it's generating and then he's trying to understand like what, what it does and, and test it. And, yeah. um, and you, obviously you have to verify, make sure it is the right thing that it's going to do. But this is where I use my <laughs> famous line. I say, you're still the pilot, Yes. just the co-pilot. It is going to be beside you. It's going to give you all the information. Yeah. But you still need to do the work of being the you pilot should. to yes. review, ensure the data is accurate before yeah. any kind of next step is taken. Right. right. So. No, but that is also what we talk about. Co-pilot it does help you. Is is your co-pilot? You're in on 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 uh, the in, in the driver's right. seat. Driver's seat. Totally. Yeah. But, at Copilot is not the automation tool that do, does everything f- what you want to do, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It can it can help in a security context. Would we want that? I, no, that's an open question. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, that's an open question because realistically, let's say you have you get an alert or an incident on the device of your CEO. Would you want Copilot to automatically block his device <laughs> without investigating? Like it does its own investigation, but without a human pay set of eyes, I, I think it can be risky from that point of view to implement it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's my two cents, but let's hear from our customers at the end of the day. 
they drive our decision making as well. Yeah, absolutely. How difficult mm. is it to co-pilot Gen AI, AI um, using that in a good way? We're on the on the good side, and we're helping to defend our customers. How difficult is it to protect all this stuff that all attackers are also coming with AI stuff? Is that is that one of the key elements um, that we that we're facing? As soon as AI became the perfect buzzword for everything, <laughs> yeah, yeah. really, not only security, it became a way for attackers to use it. Oh yeah. 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 So, generally speaking, I think you, you had a conversation earlier earlier with uh, with somebody from the uh, threat protection platform. Yeah. I think she can speak a lot better than I can in terms of disrupt, attack disruption. Yeah, we had a conversation on that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So generally speaking, uh, we want to separate a bit the two things. We will have our methods to protect against AI. It doesn't necessarily need to be an LLM protecting against another LLM. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. So that's what the number one. It is difficult from every standpoint. The number of attacks, as you've seen today with, uh, with Ramia mentioning as well, has mm -hmm. increased tenfold, a hundredfold even. Yeah, yeah. So the landscape of threats is ever evolving. That I don't expect that, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Lavania, but I don't expect that to change. Right. It will always be increasing. There will always be new ways to to. I think we should, and we should always expect that when anything. Like just because something cool comes out, it's like, exactly. ah, you know. So AI is great if you use it the right way, but it's always going to be bad actors trying to find something or another to do bad things, right? Uh, it could be a, uh, you know, a, a, we can go ahead very basic too, like world disasters. And then next thing you know, you got bad actors trying to scam people and, you know, uh, you know, setting That's up malicious. That's always going to be the case. It's, exactly. So we just have to stick, you know, five steps ahead or 10 steps ahead and stuff like that. And The best thing you can do is mitigate the exposure that you have mm -hmm. from a device perspective, using Intune, Defender for Endpoint yeah. and so on, from uh, off email perspective, using Defender for Office and the entirety of the product stack there, yeah. applications, Defender for Apps, as well as Intune. So we, we have the solutions to protect against that as much as possible if they are implemented to a degree where the attacker needs to find like the smallest little hole go down yeah. <laughs> to actually go in, then definitely. But what we can use Copilot for, for example, is I'll just give this as a simple example. Uh, whenever there's a phishing email, mm -hmm. it's very tricky to realize as an end user because all attacks at the end, where do they begin? They can begin at the device, but it's still the user who is yep. the main point. Who's initiating it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So it can be a malware on a device, definitely, but it's still a user there. The human factor. The human factor. Yeah. And that's always something that we need to keep in mind, and that's always something that we can use different technologies and different possibilities to actually teach people how to respond. When there is even the little, the smallest amount of doubt, Maybe report. That. Absolutely. And then we can use Copilot to just see if it's actually something malicious or not. Yeah, all great points. And I'll add a slightly different paradigm to this entire equation. And a lot of the time when people come talk to me about Copilot, I tell them this is not going to close on product gaps. It's not there to fill in feature gaps. It's really doing what you really would have spent a lot of time trying to get all the information together, that's where the power of Copilot really comes. Mm -hmm. Which is where uh, some of the things to really think through is if there is an exhaustive workflow or if there is no straightforward way for an IT admin or a sec admin to kind of go through the different uh, experiences and get all of this information and then do offline processing, that's where Copilot really shines. Yeah. Right? So, Which is where one it is not there to address product gaps. And second thing is, what I love foundationally about Copilot for security is um, not coming up with a completely new role-based access control model. It is using existing RBAC for each of the products that we talk in a context of the Copilot for security ecosystem, right? So mm -hmm. that's where this becomes 
so awesome because we are not giving any of these malicious actors a backdoor entry into the data through the open prompting experience. Why? Yeah. Because we are still honoring the RBACs of respective yeah. 1P products. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Lavanya, you did a session on Copilot uh, this morning in Intune that was demystified from basics to pro. Yeah. What was the key takeaway for attendees that they got from your session? So one of the uh, key takeaways was as much as our customers are learning on the prompt engineering, uh, we are learning on the right way to uh, skill the experiences that we are enabling for them, right? Like when we started, we said, okay, let's go open prompting. But what we realized is as you're working through a development process, there is going to be a time frame in which the evolution is going to happen. So if you're trying to tell the customer, okay, go ahead and use the open prompting, they do not know uh, what feature to go after, right? And they can ask any question. And that's where we have a, we need to have a two-way handshake is the way I call it, right? Like where customers need to understand for what scenarios, what capabilities, uh, we are integrating the large language models and bringing in a copilot experience and ensuring the using <coughs> that for those scenarios is where I think uh, we have evolved, right? So which yeah. is where I call it basics to pro because we started with scope prompt experience but we've got feedback from them where they're like when are you bringing back open prompting we said mm. we will bring back open prompting but open prompting cannot be without any context right so right, we want right. to have the products contextual uh, insights to be able to help them with the right kind of actions that they need to yep. take and also the scenarios that we are enabling with copilot really has to be high value scenarios and the right use case for leveraging large language models. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because if I am able to do exactly the same thing without large language models, then that's where we need to pause and ask ourselves, are we overusing or using Copilot for a wrong reason? Yeah, and that's super important. Where do you implement it? I, it's fine. We can. It, you can technically implement it all over the place. Totally. Right, yeah. right, right. But if it's a simple click that you have to do just to get the exact same information compared to a, maybe writing an entire prompt, then it's not necessarily high value in any way, shape, or form. So right. we need to yeah. scope it to those high value scenarios. Yeah. And that's where, generally speaking, we mm -hmm. started doing it. And the other thing that I will also say, this is the two-way track that I keep talking about, right? Like um, in the session, today's session also, I did cover about embedded workflow. The two parts is think about Copilot as the main dish or think about Copilot as an ingredient, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely brand new perspective that we are bringing into the conversation with our customers. And the reason why it's important is you may be in a workflow to your point, now do we really need Copilot? Probably for step five, I may need Copilot because it helps. But in another scenario, I need Copilot through and through, right? So which is where their Copilot is almost like the main dish. And uh, being mindful about where to use Copilot uh, is going to be the key to the success of embedded experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, oh, I have last one. I have one last question. <laughs> <laughs> Lafayette, we'll do uh, another session. Um, uh, you talk already about prompt books, uh, um, uh, the prompts that we need to use. Um, the session is how to become a prompt engineer. Mm -hmm. A bit. What do I need to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, attend your session. Uh, I know, but yeah, uh, attend my session. But I think. Uh, Behind the scenes, uh, what is a lot more important is in what context are you asking the question and what is the context you need to provide to the co-pilot is what is going to be key. It is not so much about, oh, tell me or tell me everything about the devices associated with user Harjit as an example, mm -hmm. right? Or tell me all the devices associated with user Harjit. If you look at it, I'm asking the question in a, same, different, way, in yeah. a different way, but that's not what we are saying, right? Tell me all the non-compliant devices associated with user Harjit uh, that have not checked in in the last 30 days. Yeah. Now, do you see the difference? That's, That's what difference. I call as the difference in the prompt engineering, yeah. right? It's not just about tweaking one or two words, and we are not expecting everybody to have English as a first language, right? You no. can ask mm -hmm. your questions even in your local language. That's why we support localization, mm -hmm. and I let Gabriel talk more about the localization because yeah. that is so important to be able to uh, 
enable co-pilot experiences across geographies, right? But it's more about the refinement and the additional context that you're able to provide to the, the prompt. The personas that you... You exactly. identify and you say, hey, I'm so-and-so, this is what I want, blah, 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 right? And that helps as well yeah. ground your question, yep. right? Uh, yep. If you're saying I'm a security admin and then you say I'm an Intune uh, admin, for example, it might give you different answers it might give based different on thoughts. what exactly yeah. you are asking. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're both asking questions about devices, yep. but when I'm going to an Intune perspective, maybe I'm looking for its compliance. Yep. But when I'm going from a security perspective, I might look at active alerts on the device or active exactly. malware on the device. So it's very important to ground uh, in general, sure. any AI model, mm -hmm. yeah. it's very, very, very structured. Like if you ask it, what's the, like to Lavania's point, tell me all the alerts from the device. You're going to get a lot of alerts. Yeah. yeah. But right. you will not get that information if I as an admin didn't have access to, exactly. let's say, US as a region, and if, let's say, Harjit's device are all part of the US region and it's part of the data center and mm -hmm. geography, I would not even get that information because I as an admin, I am only uh, honored to be able to see the data that is available in the European region, right? Yep. That right, means right. my view is limited. That means the response that I potentially might get as an admin for the European region versus Gavira as an admin for the US region could be way different, right? So yeah. having all of those insights and the role that an admin plays is also pivotal to the response that you're going to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I'll mention here, uh, just uh, to, to close up, um, unless he has another question, um, <laughs> you know, the term prompt engineering or prompt engineer, it, it scares some people. They're like, oh my God, it's just like a... No, so it's something I have to go to school for and stuff like that, right? But it's, it's what we're talking about is really how to use Copilot, how to ask. It's even simpler from my point of view. Yeah. Uh, when you're asking a question, tell me everything about the device, you're literally just looking for a few pieces of information. Like right. in your head, you do have that full question, yes. yeah. but you just want to get it a bit faster. So my advice is put that question that you usually just think it, yeah. put it as a prompt, and then your responses will be a lot better. Exactly, exactly. And again, don't think that one time you ask the question, yeah, yeah. you got the answer, that's the end of it. No, no, it's, no, no. it's a conversation, right? Yeah. Because it's think about it almost like it's not a human sitting on the other side who can read your mind and know what is <laughs> yes. it that you're trying to ask, right? It's a machine, it's, it's a model sitting mm -hmm. on the other side. So you need to have the conversation and you this is where I say, ask, iterate, ask, iterate until you're satisfied and then yeah. you act, right? So yeah. that's where this ask, iterate and act is like my famous workflow that I use in this <laughs> natural language to KQL scenario as well, right? So being yeah. able to think about it in a, in a loop and having that conversation to ensure that you're getting yeah. the right response is pivotal. I love when you mention the word conversation. It really is like, you know, you get something back, you're like, yeah, that's good. Could you add on this now? Could you give me this additional Or can thing? you remove this? Can you remove this and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. Um, yeah but there is fantastic. so much data mm -hmm. in, in, in inside the systems that if you if, if the question is too broad, I know, <laughs> we will close up in a few seconds. <laughs> if, if your answer is too broad, then you will get too much information where you can do anything with. So you need to specify, and that's what you say with the iterations and so on. Right. And I think that is one of the important things that I learned mm -hmm. in the last uh, last half hour. Focus on, uh, from, my, from, from, from myself, focus on the prompt and the, engine, uh, the prompt engineering and move forward on the conversation that you have with a large language model. But sure for my session tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see if I can make it. <laughs> but we'll do that. Thanks for the recording. Thanks for all the insights in Copilot. And I think the, um, this is a topic uh, where we can talk about hours uh, in, but maybe uh, let, uh, in, the, in the next future when there are more enhancements uh, within the ecosystem we can talk about uh, more thanks for thanks for now thanks for having thank us thank you so much thanks for the opportunity you, yeah yeah and if you want to uh, if you watch this video or listen to this recording like and subscribe for all the new ones that are coming up thanks <laughs>